Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Fee and this is Money Philosophy. Thank you for coming back for another day of Tesla analysis. Uh, in this episode today, I will also add on Shopify, Amazon, Neo, and Uber at the end of the video. So if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I am a growth stock investor and a trader and I'd love to share with you my investing and trading journeys. So first, let's talk about the macroeconomics environment. On Monday, we had a big gap down across the board, including Tesla um, and the reason for that was mainly due to the Evergrande debacle out of China and then Tuesday Wednesday and today the stock has start moving back slowly with Tesla almost being flat today and closed the gap that it was created on Monday so this is all good news for the bulls so we would do want to take a look at chart and see whether Tesla can get to above 756 by tomorrow or next week uh, and if so what is the price target similarly we we should be looking at Amazon as well to see um, given that it has been bullish the last few days where it could end up for the week or uh, next week uh, keep in mind that we are in the last week of September and the first week of October would we would see a uh, Tesla delivery result but we also start to see uh, all of the technology stock getting ready for earnings season in the month of October so there's a lot to look forward to and a lot of volatility to be expected for traders like ourselves um, let's take a look at chart um, I will walk you through my analysis and I will also share with you what I will be doing as a Tesla uh, investor as well so stay tuned and let's get right into it so here is the daily chart for Tesla as you can see the Tesla already filled the gap today um, this was a gap these two base lines here pictures the gap that was created on Monday um, with Tuesday Wednesday and today Tesla effectively filled that gap but it is having some trouble getting up above 756 and stay there um, right now it is at 754 um, the previous high in the last few day was about um, 764 um, so I do hope that Tesla could get back there uh, by tomorrow because that is a good sign and it could potentially spike further. Conversely, if it cannot get any higher than this, then 755, 756 would serve as a very strong resistance and Tesla might go back down temporarily next week. Um, so that's something to pay attention to. Um, as of right now, if I look at the overall chart, I think Tesla is still in a very bullish pattern with a bull flag still intact here I do think that the first price target for that bull flag is 793 uh, but we need volume in order for Tesla to get there uh, at the time of this recording it is about 345 we still have about 15 minutes left in the trading day the volume is only 62 percent which tells me that um, the price action is pretty weak today um, there is no major uh, buy or sell on either side today. So it is um, give or take just a consolidation day. So tomorrow will be very interesting with a Friday um, with the last day of the week. Uh, Tesla tends to um, sell off on Friday. So I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla moved down a little bit to about 746, 740 area um, and then start going back up the week after, which is... Um, the week of quarterly delivery result announcement. So um, that could be a very strong possibility. At the hourly chart today, um, you can see that Tesla has been moving up um, since the bottom on Friday and it has been making a higher high and lower high uh, even today it is just retracing a little bit but I do think that it could continue to spike up in the short term if not tomorrow then most likely next week um, the trading range for tomorrow is a 763 on the upper end um, 7 54 in the middle point and 748 at the lower pivot point so uh, the upper end of the trading range is not too far off from today um, which is 763 764 um, so if Tesla does get there and stay there by the end of the day tomorrow then that would be a very good end to the week um, let's swing back to the weekly candle here um, you can see that the weekly candle is still pretty much bullish continuation last weekend this week um, there's no major difference in trading range here uh, once again if anything this week candle is like an inside candle um, from last week so uh, the bullish action is still there 
tomorrow Tesla could retrace a little bit and we would still have an inside bar. So Tesla could retrace uh, up to 746 and we would still be okay. Um, that would still be an inside bar for the week. So I'm not too concerned about the price action tomorrow. However, if Tesla ends the week um, below, I, I want to say below 7.30, then it could be a bearish price action somewhat. Uh, but for right now, uh, we are far away from 7.30, so I'm not too concerned, and I hope that Tesla won't be getting anywhere near 7.30 tomorrow. Um, it could retrace a little bit up to 7.46 and continue to go back up, which is perfectly fine. Um, and I think right now with the weekly chart we also see a bull flag on the weekly even though it does have a lot of volatility um, if i were to draw this imaginary uh, weekly bull flag i want to say the first price target would be 824 um, and the second price target would be uh, 900. so i do think that in a short term tesla could get there uh, it is just a, so i do think that in the um medium term not quite short term but medium term tesla could get to 900 um, and when i say medium term i want to say a few months out as opposed to short terms um, a couple days or a couple weeks out going to the 15 minute chart to kind of review the price action for today tesla had a gap up in the morning and quickly filled that gap this uh, green line here represent where tesla ended the day uh, from yesterday and so sure enough within the first um a few hours tesla filled that gap and touched the middle pivot point then reverse and move back up so this does look like a cup and handle on the 15 minute chart uh, which means that tomorrow it could take off a little bit tesla usually has the tendency to fill the gap though so if it does create a gap in the morning whether a gap up or gap down um tomorrow is friday i would probably uh, consider a gap play especially if the gap is larger than five dollars i think that's a good opportunity for a gap play uh, but once again the price uh trading range for tomorrow um, is 763 on the upper end which is quite a few to go uh, from here at 753 so if tesla has a gap down um let's say you know seven. 50 or so or 748 um, in the morning when it opens at the bottom pivot point here it would be a good opportunity to take uh, a call option to go up uh, but conversely if tesla has a gap up that is significant enough i would believe that tesla will fill that gap and couple with the fact that on friday tesla usually um, has sell off uh, it could potentially move back down um, if you are looking at a swing trading i would wait to see whether Tesla could end the week above 756 before considering um, swinging a call option. Fi, um, it's also very similar to Tesla. Um, you can see that uh, Shopify gap down had a very wild swing on Monday and then start moving back up for the last uh, three days. Uh, today it is trading at 1477. It is still up almost a percent from yesterday. Um, it does have a little bit uh, to go before it can get to 1510, which is the current 50 days SMA. I do think that Shopify should get there in the short term. Um, right now, Shopify is trading between 50 days SMA and 200 days SMA, um, and that is between 1510 and 1297, so almost 1300. So that's a very big gap. So right now, I'm looking for Shopify to retest 1510 before we can figure out whether it can spike through it or it, it would fall back down. And if that's the case, then the head and shoulder pattern is still intact. I'm not still convinced about Shopify being bullish just yet, but tomorrow will be very interesting. Um, given the fact that the last uh, two days has been bullish, tomorrow could be a decently bullish day, especially if Shopify gaps down. Um, right now, Shopify is at $14.77. If Shopify has um, $7 to $10 gap down in the morning, I would be taking a call um, for it to go up. Let's take a look at the trading range tomorrow by looking at the 15-minute chart here. Um, so the trading range is on the upper end 1501, which is about $9 from the 50 days SMA. The middle pivot point is uh, 1472, which is less than where Shopify is trading right now. And the bottom pivot point is um, 1460. Um, so for me, if Shopify gaps 
down and um, is hovering around this pivot line here, uh, 1472 to 1470, I would take a call for Shopify to go all the way up to 1501. Conversely, if, Sh if Shopify opens um, somewhere around 1495 or so, I would wait for Shopify to touch 1500, which is a pivot point resistance, or I would wait until it hit 1510 and then start taking a put down because I think both of these lines serve as very strong resistance for Shopify right now. And if for whatever reason tomorrow it hit these one of these two resistance, it will be a good opportunity to play a put option for it to fall back down. Amazon quickly here, uh, 50 days SMA, is at uh, 3418 and Amazon is just right at 50 days SMA right now. Um, so tomorrow will be interesting um, to see if uh, Amazon could get to above 50 days SMA because that would be a bullish sign. Um, there is a gap uh, created on Monday. So to fill that gap, Amazon needs to get back to 34.62. So it does have quite a bit to go, roughly $50 more to go. And if it does get there, then I do think next week will be bullish for Amazon. Uh, keep in mind that we are heading into October. We're not quite there, but we're heading there. And usually uh, the beginning of October would be bullish for Amazon, um, where it was waiting for where it is uh, waiting for Q3 delivery result. Um, we also note that there is another gap at 3600. This was created in the last earnings uh, season um, where it dropped from 3600 down to 3347. So if Amazon closes the gap created on Monday at um, 3460, it could potentially continue to go back up. Um, the next resistance is 3530. 3585 and to close the earnings gap it would be at 3600. I think that Amazon has a very strong probability of getting back to 3600 within the next few weeks assuming uh, the QQQ and the spider cooperate. Um, so let's wait for that opportunity. Um, I think right now the market is sort of in a dangerous territory because any news, uh, bad news coming out of China for Evergreen could potentially affect it. Uh, but for right now, uh, the last few days has been good. Um, so trending is bullish. The trend is currently bullish and trend is your friend. So I would be trading um, usually uh, I would normally be looking at, so I would be considering a bullish call option for Amazon, assuming the setup is right. One of you asked if I could also take a look at Uber. Um, so this is what I'm looking at here on the daily chart of Uber. Uber had made, made its way above um, 50 days SMA um, earlier this week. Um, that is great, great news. And because of that, it is relatively bullish. Uh, but keep in mind that it is still below 200 days SMA. Um, it created a death cross in early July, and it has been on the downturn. Um, so right now with the gap up and the spike over the last three days, um, the bulls have some hope, but I do think that Uber might retest 50 days SMA again before moving back up all the way to 200 days SMA. Um, so right now the support level Level that I have is $45 and I know Uber is right at that level, $45.55. Um, the lower support point will be $43.31. 50 days SMA would be $42.54. Uber might fill the gap and that would be at $39.88 um, and then potentially going back up. But I, I think that given the price action and the volume, which is almost at 100% today, um, I, I don't think Uber could go all the way down to fill the gap within the next few days, probably retrace a little bit and continue to go back up and then fill in gap and sometime in the future. Um, also keep in mind that the RSI is at is top right now, so it is very much overbought. Um, that means that uh, a retracement is in order, and I do expect Uber to fall down a little bit um, to retest some of the support area here, possibly up to 42.54 to retest 50 days SMA before moving um, further. 
Uh, looking at the trading range for tomorrow, tomorrow trading range seems to be very small. Um, upper end is 46.48, middle pivot point is 45.50, and the bottom pivot point is 44.86. Uh, and, and the reason that the trading range is very narrow tomorrow is because of the price action today. Um, it is relatively just consolidating, so there is nothing too exciting tomorrow. Here we have NEO. Um, I think NEO is in a bearish run right now. Um, death Cross created in mid August. The stock has been moving down um, on Monday. It also gapped down, uh, even though the last few days it has been moving up a little bit. I still think that uh, a cluster of candles with a gap down like this and it's still hanging there without filling the gap, um, it is just uh, a matter of time before it falls down further. Uh, in the short term, NEO could get down to about $34 before bouncing because 34 seems to be a good support point here. Um, to get back to completely bullish, NEO needs to be above 44.39, which is a very long way to go from here. That's over 20%. So we can only take one day at a time with NEO. Um, if anything, I lean bearish on NEO um, over bullish at this point. Um, the volume today is only 66%, so it is only um, below average, and so it's not too exciting. Uh, while NEO is going up almost 1%, the volume is not too exciting. I do think that NEO could fall back down again. Um, the next week or so. Um, nothing too exciting about NEO. If you are a long term investor in NEO, I would consider this an opportunity to buy some more. Uh, but given the geopolitical dynamic in um, China, I, I am a little bit worried about the long term health of companies like NEO. Uh, not because uh, it doesn't have the financial health or that it doesn't have the market share in China. I think the uh, political environment could be very hard for it to uh, independently grow. Um, and it could also, and it might always be crippled by. Um, the government with all kinds of regulations and demands. Um, so that's something to keep in mind if you are a neo investor. But if you are a trader, I definitely lean bearish over bullish at this point. So this is it for this video. I hope you find the information helpful. Uh, there's a lot to look forward to for Tesla this year. I know there are only about three months left until the end of the year, but there is so much to look forward to, uh, beginning with Q3 quarterly delivery result, Q3 financial result, and then Q4 we have a lot to look forward to with the expansion of Giga Shanghai, with the commencement of Giga Berlin and Giga Austin. Um, so all good news for Tesla. I'm very humbled uh, and honored to be part of the Tesla community here on YouTube. I really appreciate all of your trust and I hope to grow with all of you um, while we share Tesla information and technical analysis. Until the next video, bye.